In this video, I'm going to explain how to create incredibly authentic stained glass designs using my stained glass creator for Affinity Designer. Each texture in the pack was sampled from real stained glass, so you can guarantee that your designs will look just like the real thing when you've finished them. To complement the textures, I've also included a set of leading brushes, which you can use to create the outlines of your design. Um, they come in four different varieties with different ranges of undulation, and there's complete instructions on how to load the textures and the brushes included in the pack. Now, the first thing I'm going to explain is how to add an outline to your design. Now, as you can see, I've prepared this document in advance, and it has four layers. We have a leading layer, which has a group of basic curves, and we have a series of shapes in three different colors. Each of these colors is going to be converted to a different glass type. Now, to add the leading to these curves, I'm simply going to select the group here, go to the Brushes tab, and then click on one of the icons here. Now, as you can see, it defaults to quite a thick line, so I'm going to reduce that by just going to the Stroke Attributes here and just changing it down a little bit. You can also draw your designs freehand using the Brush tool by simply selecting it here and then selecting one of the leading brushes and drawing like so. Now it's time for the fun part. I'm going to add some glass textures. Now as you can see, I already have a set of the styles loaded in the little styles panel here. Um, if the styles panel isn't visible, simply go to View, Studio and Styles here. So, to apply one of the styles, you'll need to select a vector shape or a group of vector shapes. And so, as I said earlier, I put each different color on a different layer and I'm converting each of these groups of shapes into a compound path by selecting all of them and then using the add function, like so. As you can see, that's now one shape. And the reason I do this is that it saves on memory. You're not applying the texture to each individual shape and creating a huge file. So now that I've got my compound path here, it really is as simple as just going to the styles panel and clicking on one of the styles. And as you can see, instant glass. It's worth noting at this stage that the way that Affinity Designer works when applying a set of textures is that the texture takes on the proportion of the objects to which it's applied. So for example, if you applied it to a square object and your texture was square, and in this case, all of my textures are square, um, then it would appear in proportion. If you applied it to a rectangle, then the texture would appear out of proportion. But luckily, Affinity Designer has a really good way of adjusting your textures, be it the size of them, the proportions, or the rotation. And to do this, you just select an applied style or texture, and simply select the Fill Tool, and you'll get this great little set of lines here, which show you the proportions of your texture. And if you want to change the proportion, simply drag one of the lines like that. So you can change the height or width. Or to rotate it, simply drag it around like so. Or to move it, just drag it around. It's, it's an excellent feature. And once you're happy with the texture, you can lock the aspect ratio by clicking this little button here. Now it's time for me to add textures to the final two sets of colours. And again, I'm going to select the compound path here. And I'm going to switch into a different set of textures. This is going to be the Cathedral Glass 2. And I'm simply going to click and apply the style like so. Now, I think the glass looks a bit small. 
So I'm going to upscale it by using the fill tool here. And the proportions are slightly out as you can see. So I'm going to just change them slightly like that. Lock it again and upscale. And you can see all the nice realistic bubbles there. And then I'll select the final group of curves here. And I'm going to select the wavy seed glass and just click on that there. And as you can see, this is quite out of proportion here. So I'm going to just adjust that. It's roughly in proportion. Block the aspect ratio and then upscale again. Now there's one final thing I'd like to teach you uh, about styles and that is um, how to adjust the effects that are used within them. Now to do this you need to look for the little effects symbol on the relevant layer and click it and this brings up the layer effects options. Now you have a list of layer effects on the left hand side and to adjust one simply select it by clicking on it and then adjust the sliders here. Now given that every shape that you'll create will be a different size and proportion you may want to adjust these to suit. So I'm just going to demonstrate here. So I want to make one a bit brighter. So I'm going to adjust the intensity there. As you can see that looks a bit better. And then I want a bit more contrast at the edges so I'm going to go to the inner shadow here. And I'm just going to increase that and as you can see get a little bit more contrast once you're done simply click close and you and that saves your effects so to finish off I'm just going to adjust the other two effects to brighten them up a bit and then we'll be done Something I forgot to mention is that there's also a set of styles for the leading which gives it a slight 3D effect and a little bit of shadow. It's very subtle but you can find that in here as well under leading style and simply select your leading group and click on the style. I say it's very subtle but you can adjust it in the same way as you did the other styles. So, and there you have a finished stained glass window.